support is rendered by an LGU when uh, they are not in the process of moving from one stage to the other in the PJS pathway. Uh, but in the spirit of transparency and reporting to their stakeholders, a performance report is rendered by the city, and that's what we will have this afternoon. We will hear from Calvario City. Uh, before we proceed with the presentation of the mayor of Calvario, may I first uh, request our distinguished panel members to introduce themselves so that uh, we will all be familiar with them, starting from the right most. My name is Attorney Raphael Lee Brown. I am a representative of the MSGC um, from the Greater Calvario Chamber of Commerce and I'm Aileen Lim, also a member of the MSGC and representing the media sector. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Police Senior Superintendent Esteban and Conchas, member of the MSGC, representing the uh, farmers. from ICD and from the Association of Insurers and Insurers of the Developing Countries. Uh, Oliver Butali, uh, ICD and uh, Board of Investments. Uh, Arden Paras from uh, London School of Economics. Uh, Mel Sarmiento of ISA, uh, likewise former mayor of Cabayo, member of the House of Representatives. Thank you, Mayor Mel. Uh, a special welcome to you. Mayor Sarmiento was a pioneer in uh, bringing PGS to Calvario City. And I now call on Mayor Ronaldo Aquino to give his uh, report. PGS panelists, distinguished guests, the PGS school champions, warmest greetings on behalf of the people of Calvario. As we say, maupayang adlaw sa iyong tanan. Today, Calvario City is here to publicly mark a point in our history where we choose to leave behind an era of unrealized potential and embrace an ambitious and challenging journey towards sustainable development through good governance. I am here on behalf of Calbayo Blooms to assert our unified commitment to transform Calbayo into the premier eco agritourism hub by 2020. Dr. Isos Stanislav, in his book, Philippines 2030 Journey to Nationhood, pregnantly observed that Calbayo City once had its heyday in the distant past when it served as the center of its region. It then drifted into the backwaters for far too many decades. Now, it is pushing itself back into the mainstream. The PGS process has been an honest and refreshing wake-up call to our city. Through it, we have created a strategy to transform our city's obstacles into its core parts, and our cities and develop resources into strategic initiatives. Our report forged through the BGS with a multi-sectoral alliance, and which I present to you today, we affirm our city's commitment to turn the bio challenges into opportunities for growth and development. The city of Calvario is among ISA's eight pioneer green cities. Since inauguration, the city has already achieved significant milestones. The city was conferred, initiated in August 2005, compliant in August 2006, and proficient in September 2009. On September 20, 2012, Calvario renewed its commitment to pursue the institutionalization 
stages. In partnership with ISOT, the city conducted a focus group discussion with 186 participants representing both internal and external stakeholders. The succeeding strategy refresh session, which gathered 38 participants from the LGU and another 40 from the MSGC, yielded a refresh strategy map, governance scorecard, and 15 strategic initiatives to support Calbayog's vision of becoming a premier eco tourism hub by 2020. President Aquino called on the LGUs to align their plans and programs with the strategic objectives of the national government. With the national mandate in mind, our PGS resulted in a roadmap and a set of initiatives that not only focuses on transforming Calbayo into a premier eco tourism hub by 2020, but also considers the national agenda by embracing governance, public-private partnership, fiscal self-reliance, entrepreneurship, and community, community empowerment, among others. To ensure the implementation of our transformation roadmap, my administration commits to provide the relevant macroeconomic policies and the required technical and financial assistance. Our department managers, as members of the PGS core team, have steadfastly shown their focus and commitment in the implementing the identified strategic initiatives alongside the other plans and programs of the LGU. On the other hand, the community, through the leadership of MSGC, shall bring in the much-needed capital investments. The community shall also assist in spreading by word of mouth and through social media the campaign to promote Calbayo as the premier eco tourism hub by 2020. And above all, the community has taken into their hands the task of monitoring the implementation of the transformation roadmap as part of their advocacy on vigilance. The 2020 development strategy map of Calbayo is anchored on the values of good governance, better quality of life for empowered, God-loving citizens, and private-public partnership for a sustainable economic development, entrepreneurship, and self-reliance. Its mission is to initiate programs with holistic approach that will promote sectoral recognition and growth actualization, thus affording its citizens and tourists with a quality basic services for progress and the total well-being. All this serves as the pillars of the Dalbayog vision to be a premier eco tourism hub by 2020. Despite the wide-ranging and advanced development plan, transformation will be hollow if it does not respond to the pressing needs and aspiration of the city. The Calbayo 2020 strategy map and vision have been crafted with this in mind. The strategy map consists of the following layers of interconnected strategic objectives. The driver is the objective of improving the quality of people. With a supportive environment, dynamic local economy, and fiscal reliance, would be transformed into productive and empowered governments with improved quality of life. In order to promote, in order to improve rather, the quality of people, it is imperative to nurture a professional and high performing city government, provide responsive information technology to support the vision, enhance the skills and capabilities of governments on tourism and agriculture and ensure access to basic education. We also need a supportive environment in order to realize the strategy map. Hence, we need to explore and utilize alternative sources of energy, build 
multimodal transport networks, and support facilities, and foster a safe and livable city. A support environment is essential to cultivate a dynamic global economy. Rather, to achieve this, we need to maximize the productivity of land resources, boost economic activity through profitable economic enterprises, position the value as a regionally competitive agri-producer, provide local entrepreneurs access to capital and markets, and position the bio as an attractive eco-agritourism destination and foster an investor's friendly atmosphere that is best in the region. A dynamic economy will be instrumental in enhancing local revenues and is achieving fiscal self reliance. With the achievement of the mentioned objectives, we are closer to our higher level goals of making Kalpayakuns productive and empowered and improving the quality of life. To measure our performance, we have identified 30 quantifiable, reliable, and regularly available strategic indicators that capture transformation in a governance scorecard. For the sake of brevity, I will only discuss three strategic indicators with corresponding strategic objectives. The three indicators are highlighted examples of how we aim to measure our performance. Please keep in mind, however, that we deem all of the 30 strategic indicators as equally important in measuring the meaningful success of ours. First, to determine fiscal self-reliance, our indicator is total local income. Currently, Calbayo has the highest percentage of era dependency in our region, compared to similarly sized cities. As you may already know, a higher era dependency reveals a city reliance of the national government instead of its own income. Such over-reliance on ERA is no longer acceptable. Increased total local income, therefore, is a sign that Calbayo can stand on its own financially a true and important indicator of progress through economic development and good governance, not only for the city, but for our country. Second, to achieve fiscal reliance, Talbayo not only needs good governance, but also to foster investors' friendly atmosphere that is best in the region. An investor-friendly atmosphere is necessary to develop or agritourism and other industries in Talbayo. We can succeed in attracting investors in our city the way we have already attracted Gaisan Grand, Gaisan Metro, Robinson's Mall, Central Mall, and other businesses to invest in Kalbayo's promising future. To measure this objective, our indicator is the amount in press of new eco and tourism related private investments. And the third example of our quantifiable performance is the measurement of our objective in position to position Kalbayo as an attractive eco and tourism destination. And this objective is important as it is directly linked to our vision of making Calbayo a premier eco agriculture hub by 2020. There have long been talks of turning Calbayo into a tourist destination because of our beautiful waterfalls, caves, long coastal area, arts and culture, and strategic geographical, ge geographic rather position. This time, Albayo commits not to, not to talking, but to the hard work of making our city a place that people will want to visit. To measure our performance, our indicators, our tourist arrivals, and number of tourists availing the LTUs to visit packages. To support the vision, we identify different strategic initiatives. And among these is the integrated food terminal. This project includes the double A Stover House, Pagsakan Center, and Trading Post, transfer to the new public market, food processing, and Pasalubong Center. Currently, 
the CPC talks with Greater Cabayo Chamber of Commerce and Industry with regards to the possibility of the GCCI's role in the IFD. We are currently in the process of identifying potential sites for the IFD. We have also recently succeeded in transferring from our old public market to our new public market, which will be closer to the potential location of the IFD. Our next steps are to finalize the involvement of the private sector to point point the actual site of the IFD and to ensure funding for the initiative based on the, our existing AIP. Second is the Eco Agritourism Group. This initiative includes the development of barangay based ecological, agricultural, and tourism attraction, including support infrastructure such as road. We have already started the process of identifying potential location of the AP group and which barangays were initially included in the first phase. The E18 loop would be developed in three phases with the aim of making all our tourist attractions readily accessible by public transportation by 2020. The first phase is to develop the Okendo loop, an area with a concentrated number of tourist destinations like waterfalls and rivers by 2015. The second phase is to develop the Nambakan loop by 2017. And the third phase is to develop the bioproper group by 2020. Our next step is to identify existing road networks that fall within the E18 loop so that we can identify the necessary construction projects to create the loops. Third, the ordinance implementation and enforcement tracking system. That requires a close coordination among the San Julian Panasol, the city administrator, City Mayor's Office, City Legal Office, and the Department of the Interior and Local Government to grant the ability of the LGU to implement ordinances. And this includes completion of the codification of ordinances and tracking of their implementation. Currently, the SP is in the process of completing the third and final step of the codification process. A process, a proposed draft for the ordinance implementation is being worked on for submission to the SP for deliberation. Fourth, the Comprehensive Tourism Master Planning aims to establish the eco Tourism Council, which will create and supervise a master plan that includes the implementation of urban renewal, beautification initiative, improving the growth of the live city, and the creation, creation of tourism packages to include cultural and historical tours. We are currently in the process of identifying potential members of the multi-sectoral EAD Council and series of meetings are scheduled in April 2013. Fifth, the Calbike Investment Promotion Center is an initiative to create processes and resources to improve Calbike City's ability to attract and manage investors. The lack of the CIPC for Calbike has made it more difficult for Calbayo to address the needs of potential investors. A formal, formalized CIPC will be more effective and efficient than the current informal system. We deliver that the CIPC will increase, we believe that the CIPC will increase our indicator of new EAT private investments. We are currently in the process of identifying a person to head the CIPC. This early, we are assured of gains from using the BGS. Our MSGC has been reactivated. There is now a more active business sector that works hand in hand with the LTU in implementing programs for social upliftment, such as that out of school youth. And these programs have already shown an impact on our objective of providing access to basic education by improving our participation rate and lowering our dropout rate. Last February, we have finally succeeded in transferring the public market and the land transport terminal from their respective dilapidated locations to a new site. We did it without endangering the lives and limbs of the demolition team as well as the protesting tenants. In consonance with our urban beautification program, we are currently implementing renovations 
of our existing urban recreation facilities such as the Nihaga Park and Julio Cardinal Rosales Plaza. Also, we are currently implementing the reblocking of our city streets and the installation of street lights along the road going to the new integrated public market and land transport terminal. We hope that the beautification program and the reblocking will increase our measure on tourist arrivals. As mentioned earlier, in a few months, the Calvayugnons and other neighboring municipalities are awaiting the operations of Centro Mall, Gaisano Mall, Gaisano Metro, and Robinson's Mall. The opening of these big business establishments will certainly properly sleep in leaps and bounds the economic boom of our locality. We have already seen movement in our measure of dynamic global economy by increased local revenue or gross, or gross receipts of business establishments. We, we further expect that the opening of these retail destinations will increase the airflow of tourists to our city. Above all, my leadership slowly but surely planting the seed of good governance through discipline and political will as the anchor of our development strategy for the Bible. The past several decades, the Calvino has been used to political accommodation as a result of political patronage. But this time, I am upholding the rule of law as the name of the game under my administration, even at the cost of my re-election bill. We see our determination for the realization of our transformation roadmap. My administration has already expressed our commitment to pursue the institutionalized stage of the PGS. Plans are in place for the DWT and the OSM to meet on multiple occasions via EAP Council as early as April 2013. The MSGC is now playing an active role in re-evaluating our city, including the MSGC's role in reviewing our zoning ordinance as part of the zoning review committee, which met on February 28. The zoning review committee's technical working group contains the participation of the Chamber of Commerce officers. Consultation with the MSGCs, therefore, is ongoing. Kalbayo City, being one of the pilot areas of the PGS, has been left behind. Therefore, we need to consolidate and reaffirm all the strategies and resources who wants to finally reach our long overdue, overdue potential of becoming the premier eco with recent hub by 2020. As the local chief executive, I vouch to support the full installation of the Calvario 2020 development strategy map and the city governance scorecard. I pledge to make Calvario more fiscally self-reliant by 2015 by increasing our local income and lowering our era as a percentage of that income. Currently, our local income in 2012 was at 64.69 million. I aim to increase this income to 75 million by the end of 2013 and to 130 million by 2015. I also pledge to increase the number of tourist arrivals. We had 7,296 tourist arrivals in 2012. I pledge to increase them to 10,000 tourist arrivals by the end of this year and to 20,000 by 2015. I encourage everyone, the ISA, our partners from the MSTC, constituents, and the rest of the community to become active implementors as well by constantly redirecting us your requested government workers each time we go astray. In closing, let me paraphrase the word of famous columnist to Rob Keros of the Philippine Daily Inquirer when he said, we can choose to be blind to what transpires in our midst and see only the glory that was Greece and the grandeur that was Rome. Or we can choose to stare it in the face and help carve the glory of your place and the grandeur of your time. My fellow PGS believers, the Calvary Nuns, are tasked to help carve the glory of our place and the grandeur 
about time. Please join and help us walk along the path of holistic development and prosperity for our beloved city. Maraming salamat.